the massive success that was Halo CE, a sequel is inevitable. However, due to Bungie being owned by Microsoft, there was heavy pressure being put on Bungie by a very, very corporate overlord to create another best-selling game. However, of course, a lot of pressure usually results in very poorly made games. However, Bungie managed to make something really special here despite this. They originally designed it to come out for all the Christmas season in 2003 and this was simply completely unviable. The game had barely been in development for that long, I mean they only finished the first one in 2001, so releasing the next one in 2003, it's, it's cutting it close. So Bungie couldn't do this. They were given about one more year to finish the game. However, this was still not enough. The game was released basically unfinished. Now, the reason why it was released really unfinished, even with this extra year, is because Bungie had gone quite over the top of the graphics, and this needs to run on an original Xbox, and they had made the game look really good for the time. However, the original Xbox couldn't run it. Their PCs could, but the Xbox couldn't. So, halfway through development, they had to scrap everything and start again an entirely new graphics engine that could actually run on an Xbox. The footage I'm taking here is from a later port of Halo 2 to PC in the Master Chief Collection. This particular footage is in the anniversary version. I do show the original graphics at some point, but I really like the way the remaster looks in this. They really did a great job of make, making cutscenes and gameplay just look great. So for the gameplay, Karma Evolved had great gameplay, so there wasn't really much to change when it came to making a second game, except they changed a few things, one of them being the shield and health system being replaced with just a shield system, they had some more weapons, such as the fuel rod launcher, but most importantly, the energy sword was added as a usable weapon. This was just an awesome thing to add, it's so much fun, and in Halo 2 it's basically like a grappling hook, and it's also like a set of wings, you look at an enemy from far away, hit the uh, the attack button, you're flying into them and uh, hit them, but you can also go flying straight past them, and you can basically use the sword just to fly with. So it's always great fun to just take around with you. Of course, in the famous cover art for this game, Master Chief is dual wielding SMGs. SMGs, of course, being a new weapon to the game, but also the dual wielding feature is really loved by Halo players. It's cool. I mean, who doesn't want to dual wield weapons? And you don't have to dual the same weapons, you can just pick up any weapon off the floor. So you can have an SMG with a plasma pistol if you want. Why not? However, you do feel this bit of rocky development shop when you try to play through the game on Legendary. Because it's so, so much harder than C was. It was just unfair. Some of the levels you start and you die before you can really even see what's going on. So, it is clearly untested and was shipped a bit too early. So, as for the level design, it feels actually a lot better than Combat Evolved. At no point in the game did I feel like it had those repetitive moments like Combat Evolved had, such as the library or certainly the control room from Halo Combat Evolved. This Halo really just felt fresh the whole way through it just was really fun and I only played this for the first time a couple months ago replayed it again on stream uh, in Legendary because I don't really want to review a Halo game if I haven't completed in Legendary but it just was fun both times and nothing felt too drawn out or repetitive great improvement because that's my biggest problem with Halo Combat Evolves level design and of course as a part of the level design, as is with every Halo game, the music's awesome. It's got a great soundtrack, it just sounds amazing, just like the first. You can hear one of the songs in the background here. It really just is what Halo is supposed to sound like. Brilliant. Nothing else to say about it. Next we'll talk about the story, and it's not ruining the story for everyone, I won't say anything, because I know a lot of people still haven't played this game. I only played it a couple months ago for the first time because it was quite hard to play. I mean, I, I had a 360 and then a PC and a PS2 before the 360, so I never actually had a chance to play Halo 2 because it was on the original Xbox. However, 
it's coming on PC and it's on Xbox One as well with the Master Chief Collection, so now anyone can try it. But anyway, I'll give a slight overview of the story without ruining anything. So the story begins with showing how both sides of the war, the Covenant and the UNSC, reacted and responded to the end of Halo Combat Evolved. Now, showing both sides of the story goes throughout the entire game and it provides such a deeper and more meaningful opponent for you to fight against. They're not just sort of an alien who is there because they are. They've actually got character development for individual aliens themselves who've got their own story as a faction alongside the human story. This is where Halo really gets its story. Halo 2 is the backbone of the Halo story and without it, the other stories are not quite as good. This game really brings it together and makes Halo what it is in terms of story. However, the story was actually affected by the Rocky developments because the story kind of just ends. At the end of the game, it just ends. It's just very abrupt. Of course, today it doesn't matter at all because the Master Chief Collection lets you go straight on to Halo 3 and carry on the story, but obviously at the time when it came out, where it just suddenly ended, it must have been a bit, a bit jarring, to say the least. As for the multiplayer, this is where it gets really important. They brought in a system for finding online games, which is still used today, mostly for consoles. You don't really see it anymore on PC. But this was used, used as an industry standard for years after. What it was was just a simple lobby system. I mean, so as it seems simple enough now, but then back then it was really revolutionizing how online play worked. You just click to find a game, you point to a lobby, and it automatically filled up with other players. Before you had to input an IP address or something like that, whereas this was simple as click and play. And on top of that, Halo 2 also introduced a competitive matchmaking system where how much skill you had chose who you would be matched with in this new lobby system. So to conclude, for the story alone, this game is worth playing. The story is really something else, I was taken aback by just how good it was when I first played it, and I think everyone should play it, it's just amazing, is the story. The gameplay, again like Halo Combat Evolved, is absolutely perfect, but this time, the even better level design to make that really amazing gameplay come out more. So you definitely should play this game. So thanks for watching, if you could give this video a like, that would really help. And tell me what you think, is there anything else you want me to talk about? Maybe some ideas for other games to cover once I've finished the Halo games? I'll hopefully see you in one of my streams, if not, I'll see you in my next video, which will be the next Halo game in the series. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.